Life's a strange thing, Dirk. Look at those two, just married. And then poor old Mrs. Mitten. Yeah, just buried. <laughs> Dirk, show some respect. Old Elsa's like a mother to me. I was happy to run errands for her right up until the end. She was a nutter. She gave me a dog's life. She was a character and there's not many left. Look at her epitaph. Here lies Elsie Mitten, who fell asleep at the ripe old age of 99. Sod the telegram. Very touchy. Oh, you can scoff, Dirk, but she's up there now. You mark my words. Well, not quite. <laughs> Rubbish. There's no such places up there. When you're dead, you're dead, Norm. That's what I think. That's your lot. Finito. Pillock. <laughs> Ow! Quiet, Dirk. Bloody hell, Norm. I've got a shooting pain right up me sniff hole, then. <laughs> Poor Elsa. I can't believe I'll never see her again. I remember once she sent me out for some sausages, and I came back with the wrong ones. She stuffed them down my throat one by one. <laughs> she really knew how to enjoy life. You bet I did. Do you think you'll ever get married, Norm? No. What woman would ever have me? Let's face it, Dirk. I'm just a failure, and that's all I'll ever be. Don't be too sure, Norman. What's the matter, Norm? I think someone just walked over my grave, Dirk. Never mind. It could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> heaven. I'm in heaven. <laughs> Hello, heaven. Listen, Branson, I've told you a million times you can have all the aeroplanes and balloons you want, but heaven is mine. Take a hike, piano teeth. <laughs> Approach. New arrival, boss. Lovable old lady. In you come, Granny. Don't patronise me, mate. Had enough of that down there. <laughs> you got. Well, I don't like to boast, but what can I do for you? Elsie Mittens. Wondered if you could do me a favour. <laughs> Good soul shake. I like your style. You've got spirit. That's why I let you up here, Elsie. Well, it's a wonder anybody's got spirit with the mess you've created on Earth. Have you taken a look down there lately? Nah, I'm not what you call a hands-on sort of deity, Else. I prefer to delegate. Let people work out solutions for themselves. Here. Is that a hole I see in my sky? That is the hole in the ozone layer. You want to look after your property, mate. Bloody vandals. I blame the parents. It's no use blaming other people. You're God, for God's sake. You're the father of all creation. That's a bit of an old-fashioned attitude for the daughter of a suffragette. <laughs> Don't you bullshit me, mate. <laughs> Just take a look at what you've created down there. War, loneliness, disease. Now, why can't you help a few people for a change? Like who, for instance? Like him, for instance. Who's he? Well, you should know. You created him in your own image. His name's Norman. He's an inventor. Is he a good inventor? Are you kidding? I'm a better inventor than he is, and I don't even invent. <laughs> but he was good to me down there, and goodness should be rewarded. Well, you said so yourself, in your novel. This? This is nothing. Wait till you see the sequel. Bible 2. This time it's personal. <laughs> now look, Rob. I'm a cussed old cow. Never asked anybody for anything, but I'm asking you to give him a break. Let one of his inventions work. Why can't you have a little faith in humanity? Why should I? What's humanity ever done for me? Oh. Great news, boss. I've just got the viewing figures for Cliff Richard's last Christmas special. They're wondrous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. But
But I'm warning you, one flash of mammon worship from that moribund suburban Newton, and I'm transfiguring him into a pillar of Saxa. Oh, thanks, Dad. You won't regret it. So you see, Una, it's not that I want to put pressure on Darren or anything, but it's just that my hair restorer is definitely my last throw of the dice as an inventor. If this doesn't work, I don't know what I'll do. I know, Norman, and don't think I don't sympathise, but I don't think you quite understand. How do you mean? Well, isn't it obvious, Norman? What's the point in me trying out your hair restorer when I'm not even bald? <laughs> now do you understand, Norman? No. Darren has a full head of hair, Norman. Has he? It's very fine blonde hair, and Darren gets very angry when people think he's bald. Don't say that word, you! You'll bring on the headaches. <laughs> oh, there, there, love. I think you'd better go, Norman. All right. Perhaps I'll just leave the bottle, eh? For God's sake, Norman, don't rub it in. I was rather hoping you might do that, Darren. <laughs> Sorry, Una, I was just being zany. Please, Norman. <laughs> You and a love, shampoo me. Oh, no sooner said, love. Oh, that's the trouble with life. There's just not enough suds to go round. And when you get right down to it, who cares about having a full head of hair nowadays? The bald-headed look is trendy. Let's face it, I'm a man born out of time. Who but a shallow idiot would care about having a full head of hair these days? No! No! <laughs> Darren? Cop all of this lot, mate. Bloody hell! I wait for it. All right, all right, I got the drift. It works, right? You'd better believe it, mate. You're a success. Me? A success? <laughs> Norm, what are you doing behind there? It won't be a minute, Dirk. I have a very important meeting today. And if I'm to be a success, I'll have to look after my image. What image? <laughs> this image. <laughs> what do you think of my ponytail? Looked better on the pony. <laughs> Quiet horse or your Evo stick. This is an important time for me. And I need only good vibes around me from now on. You know what, Norman? Having hair has really gone to your head. Rubbish. <laughs> Success won't change me. I'll still be the same down-to-earth, lovable guy I always was. By the way, don't call me Norman. I'm thinking of changing my name. What to? Trigger? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I could really fancy you, Norman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. People have always mocked genius. But don't forget, you two need me more than I need you. Yeah, we take it all back, Norm. We're sorry. Now be a pal and open me chum. I'm starving. Be serious. I'm meeting an entrepreneur. I can't do lunch with marabone jelly down my 501s, can I? <laughs> but no! You're so smart. Here's a can opener. Do it yourself. There's my cab. Ciao. <laughs> Success won't change him, will it? No, he'll always be a pillar. <laughs> oh, well. Here we go. <clears throat> Norman! 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 Hang on a minute, mate. Look! Dandruff! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, pal. Now you take care of him, mate. He's the king of the follicles. In fact, he's folliculing brilliant. Do you realize the significance of what you're telling me, Norman? Since time immemorial, men have pursued two things. The meaning of existence and a cure for baldness. <laughs> what are you giggling at? I was just thinking, perhaps a cure for baldness is the meaning of existence. <laughs> My God, Norman, you're stupid. <laughs> but that's what I like about you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Addison. 
You're completely unlike me. As you know, fate has condemned me to being... hip. I know. It can't be easy squeezing into an Armani suit at your age. Not to mention the colostomy bag disguised as a belt wallet. <laughs> Never mind, Addison. In many ways, I've come to look upon you as the father I no longer have. And in many ways, Norman, I've come to look on you as the arsehole I no longer have. <laughs> that is why, whenever you come to me with a new marketing concept, I listen. Even though your other concepts were rubbish. I still believe in those, Addison. And I believe in my hair restorer even more. Please say you'll give it a chance. I intend to, Norman. Oh, God knows why. Uh, Mr. Green? Typical of you, Norman. You wait till there's a recession on, then you go and invent a hair restorer. Perhaps it's an omen. Yes, Mr. Mammon. Uh, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are completely bald. No, not at all. Allow me to rephrase that. You have a full head of hair, but it's very fine blonde hair. Am I right? Yes. I'm glad you noticed that. I have. Vanity. All is vanity. Just rub a bit of that on your bonds, will you, Tony, please? What is it? Hair restorer. But I'm not... For people with a full head of hair. Oh, right. If this stuff works, Norman, the spin-offs will be limitless. The market will explode. Former baldies will be getting into moose, going to the barbers, wearing headbands, the works. You will be the Christopher Columbus of the crew cut. Blimey. What should we call my hair restorer then, Addison? Well, ask yourself. Who is your marketing target group? Shallow idiots, I suppose. Well, there you have it. Shallow dot for men. It works. <laughs> Norman, say hello to fame and fortune. Hello. At last. All my life I've been wanting hair. And now you can give it to me. Please, can I touch the hem of your raiment? All right, but make it quick. I'm going to a party. Tell me, Norman, did you always know you were going to be a success? No, but I did always know I was going to be a complete failure. <laughs> in fact, I had complete confidence in my own inability. <laughs> oh, really, Norman? That's very clever. Is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Well, you're the, uh, the face on the verge of fame, aren't you? The, the, the one for hair restorer. Tell me, isn't that rather an unnamed sort of concept? Perhaps, but in the morning, I shall be sober. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. It never quite works when you try to be clever, does it? <laughs> Sorry, babe. I'm a bit out of my box. Excuse me. Oh, God. It's hard work, all this drinking. But how can I be a success if I don't have a drink problem? Look at them. Look at yourself. I used to be proud of being a reflection, but I'm not anymore. What do you mean? You're vain, shallow, pretentious. Do you think I want to look like you? You've changed, Norman. Of course I've changed. How can it be a success if you don't change? Do you think I wanted to be a failure all my life? All right, keep your hair on. Don't you tell me what to do. Right, that's it. Come back. What are you doing? I'm turning my back on you, Norman. And I won't be back until you've first seen the error of your ways. Yeah, and that goes for me, too. What? I'm off. <laughs> no reflection, no shadow. I'm an existential nightmare. That's pretty hip, really. I think that calls for another drink. Dirk, I'm home. Dirk. I'm very pleased to hear it. Perhaps I can have me dinner now. Anyway, what the hell time do you call this? Thursday. I've been to a party. <laughs> Life's one big party to you these days. You treat this house like a hotel. I can't help it if I'm a hellraiser, can I? 
Come on, dying for a drink. Great. Here's some cider vinegar. Don't <laughs> mind that, Norman. I haven't eaten in three days. Have a heart. You did so eat. I gave you the wings off one of my flies yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, Spider. I'm just greedy, I guess. That's one thing about us non-humans, Norman. We mightn't have much, but at least we've got a sense of community. Yeah, which is more than you can say for some people. Precisely. We'll meet again. Don't know where. where. Don't, don't know, know where. where. Quiet! Oh, no. Quiet! Where me? I can't have a bunch of possessions mutinying on me. I need peace. There's a live television interview tomorrow. I've got a big day ahead of me. You've got a big head on top of you as well, mate. <laughs> Quiet, horse. The trouble with you lot is you don't understand artistic temperament. <laughs> Scorn, if you will. But I say that men can be gods. Look. I can crack a Brazil and get the nut out all in one piece. I can do anything. Anything. Except get up off the floor. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> I'll have one of those, Norm. Here. I thought you didn't like nuts. Why not? I've licked my own often enough and they taste all right. <laughs> you eat any old rubbish when you're starving. <laughs> get off. <laughs> I need to sleep. Don't you remember us? We are all the hair you ever had. From every shave, every haircut, every discreet pluck at the insides of your nostrils. The lot. We are back, Norman. And we are angry. Angry? Why? What you're doing with your hair restorer isn't ecologically sound, Norm. You're forcing hair to grow inorganically, using horrible toxic chemicals. Soon, us follicles will be subject to hideous mutations. We could end up looking like this. <laughs> or this. Oh, oh, no! Worried, Norm. Yes! Yes, I am oh, worried! I <laughs> Wake up, Norman. Where are you? Who are all those people? Probably fans. You live through this and we'll talk business. Thanks, Addison. My nerves are jangling. Lucky it's only some bimbo that's interviewing me. So, you and the Gallus Rebirth <laughs> always seem to be utterly useless, pointless, environmentally unfriendly, ideologically dubious, pathetic crutch to the male psyche, known as hair restorer, am I right? Got it in one, babe. I'm working on one for the chicks, too. I'm going to call it Sexy Tush. <laughs> That's very big of you, Norman. Well, you know, fair dues. Right on, aim you. Indeed. Now, tell us about your hair restorer, Norman. Does it work every time? Oh, yeah. No problem. Every time. Do you know what, Mew? I've never yet known it not to work. Really? That's quite interesting because we've done some research and we found there was at least one person on whom your hair restorer did not work, Norman. No, no, no. You're wrong there, Mew. Mark my words, when that stuff hits the streets, you'll search high and low and still not find a dissatisfied customer. Really? That's very interesting. I mean, look at me. I'm the perfect advertisement for my product. Once upon a time, I was completely bald. Now look at me. I've got a ponytail and everything. 
<laughs> and that's all this week from Exposing Assholes. We'll see you again soon. Works on other people. I don't understand why it doesn't work on me. Because you're made in God's image, you prat. And God's as bald as a badger's bum. <laughs> and don't you be such a smug cow. <laughs> Well, I Addison. I think I got away with it. Excuse me, Norman. Seen a friend. They can say what they like. My hair restorer still works. Just not on me, that's all. <coughs> that reminds me. I must remember to feed Dirk. Dirk, I'm home. I bought you a new food bowl. Dirk? <laughs> Dirk? Dirk? What have I done? It's your own fault. You neglected us all in your selfish pursuit of fame and fortune. You did that to him. Don't say that. Perhaps it's still not too late. <laughs> Dirk, don't leave me. I know I've been a fool, but I'll make it up to you. You'll see. Look at that then, eh? Must do your godly old half proud to see a sinner repent. Yeah, look at him. He'd be quite touching if he wasn't so stupid. <laughs> Dirk was the best friend I ever had, Hawk. He was the only friend you ever had. <laughs> I know. And I wasn't even there for him at the end. Do you suppose he suffered much? Oh, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say about eleven. First healthy, now Dirk. It's true what they say. It's the good that die first. That must be why I'm still around, then. Dirk, you're alive. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Well, don't just stand there sobbing tears of gratitude. Get my bloody dinner out. <laughs> Ouch. I'll go and open your two tins straight away. As a matter of interest, where exactly did you get those bones? I pinched them. Leftovers from the glue factory. The glue factory? Oh, cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is what you get up to when you're not being celestial, then, is it? I'm surprised you find time to relax. Well, as you know, Elsie, eternity is a long time. So I do get the odd moment to hang loose. Mm. Get off! Go find a pinhead to land on, Angel. Yes, but don't you miss all the hurly-burly of life on Earth, then? You know, all the, all the cut and thrust and intrigue and that. No, I've done all that. I've burned off my bad karma, me. Why'd you ask? Well, you just want to be careful, that's all. There's plenty of men down there who'd just love to step into your shoes. I mean, look at Norman and his miracle hurry story. Norman? Norman's not in my league, else. Don't forget, I created the world in six days. Well, what did you do on the seventh day, then? I washed my hair. <laughs> Had enough to eat, then, Dirk? Yes, thank you. All right, so maybe I am one of life's heroes that has feet of clay. And maybe I have got a head of clay to match. But when they come to write the history of the hair follicle invention, the name of Norm Lovett will be more than bum fluff trapped in a fly leaf. My invention worked, and no matter what else happens in my life, they can't take that away from me. Excuse me. Hello, Darren. Here you. About this hair restorer. Yeah, what about it? Well, you never told me it only worked for six days. I want a word with you. And me. And me. My. What lovely heads of hair. Get him! <laughs>
Oh, well. You know what they say. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. See you next week. Help!